<clears throat> Hello. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <clears throat> Mike wasn't working for some reason. I just I, every now and again it goes, nah, not going to work. I'm going to use your VR headset as my speaker, and uh, I have to unplug the mic, plug it back in again, and then it decides to work. So, good morning. How is everybody? As usual, Thursday morning, I'm completely unorganized. I've just sat down, just have a breakfast, just got back from my spin class, so haven't had a chance to look at anything yet. Morning, Ladder. Morning, Johannes. Morning, Sega. <clears throat> Dear Armand. I am back, sound-wise. Uh, quick uh, look at the news to start off with. Uh, we had FOMC last night. I wasn't around for FOMC, but uh, I haven't looked at it. I'm going to have a look at the minutes in a minute. <clears throat> minutes in a minute. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and just see what uh, what that was all about. Um, today we've got uh, non-farm employment change at one fifteen, and then unemployment at one thirty, which is quite nice because it gets all this out of the way ahead of the New York Open. Uh, so very hit and miss um, with this. Uh, this is what they were looking for tomorrow. This is the important bit tomorrow. So. Um, we've got obviously the CAD and US dollar tomorrow. We'll have a look at these in a minute on the fundamentals. <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah, so got news this afternoon ahead of the New York Open, which we obviously need to be aware of. Uh, let's just have a quick look at what happens in the Fed. Uh, no one predicted that rate cuts would be necessary in 2023. Right. Uh, participants agreed that the Fed made significant progress in moving to a sufficiently restrictive monetary policy stance yeah so it's fine presidents welcomed october and november inflation drops but agreed that it would take substantially more evidence to progress to be confident of a sustained downward path short-term <clears throat> interest rate futures drop after the fed minutes okay so um, what I suspect from that is they are thinking that the uh, Fed <clears throat> are going to slow down the rates. So we were look, we're looking at at least another 0.75 uh, over the next quarter to six months, I would say. So 5.25 to 5.5 being the max. So <clears throat> we went up by a quarter of a percent last time. So I suspect they are because uh, obviously the main thing obviously is inflation. Inflation is 7.1%, but it came down by over half a percent last uh, quarter. So it's likely that they will start to slow this rate, but whether they slow this rate on the next meeting or not, difficult to tell. That was very uh, uh, sort of woolly, isn't it? What they said in the meeting minutes. So no real clues there. Uh, so at the moment, I would say carry on, US, expecting some kind of US dollar strength uh, and weaknesses in the indexes at the moment, but we'll see. Um, <clears throat> obviously, tomorrow's the main uh, unemployment will have an impact tomorrow for the CAD and for the US dollar, because uh, obviously this is this is also indicative of a recession uh, and obviously is caused by inflation um, and the economy slowing down. So the more they put up interest rates, um, the more people become unemployed unfortunately. So uh, we will see. <clears throat> Morning, David. Morning, Trevor. So uh, yeah, so nothing, no real clues there for us uh, yesterday. Um, sentiment at the moment, obviously, from a retail perspective, uh, flipped a little bit more short on euro US dollar, which isn't good for the US dollar. Um, so it's all a bit, it's all quite balanced at the moment. New Zealand dollar CAD coming down very nicely. Um, we'll have a look at those in a minute as well. Uh, so quick look at the positions. Uh, yesterday I banked, oh, hello. Uh, banked $239 this morning. What have I banked this morning? What a card. Uh, Pan New Zealand was yesterday. Uh, so yeah, oh, look at that, stopped out of odd card. Uh, I'm in another short, oh, hello, a bit of so I post that. Oh, it's taking market reverse alerts indicate it's taking trades faster than I can um, post them. Unfortunately, nothing I can do about that. That's a problem with automation. I can't post automation when I'm asleep. 
Um, morning, David. Uh, let me just post this quickly. Uh, odd card, odd card out of first position overnight. Uh, EA added a second short overnight two. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, in short again, no problem getting in short on Aussie CAD at the moment. Um, sentiment is short, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, so, yeah, close that out. Uh, so, banks caught for percent on that one this morning. Uh, got caught for percent sitting in profit. Pound US dollar short. How long we got to the market? So, in one minute. Uh, right. um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so pound New Zealand, uh, sorry, pound US dollar, uh, I've got short at the moment, uh, looking for a drop on the pound US dollar, US dollar, looking for US dollar strength, didn't get it last night. So the reason I've got the pound US dollar on um, was basically to try and get some uh, uh, exposure on the US dollar ahead of FOMC. So I got in here on this move down with first position. Uh, and then we pushed back up yesterday. So I took a second position up there. Um, and obviously averages here. So in profit on these at the moment. Uh, looking for initial target down at ADR low, at 150 ADR, this uh, low of the week. Uh, but yeah, see, see when it gets there. Um, I've got New Zealand dollar CAD, which I've put back on again. So I banked that one yesterday. Um, wish I'd have taken it off. Really annoyed about that one. I had $700 in profit on this up here. Uh, and I was looking for a pullback push to break that high. Didn't get it. We just got a low. So just came back. So I got out of that one on a stop. I put the stop below the low of the day, basically. So there's your low of the day yesterday. So I put the stop at the low, below the low of the day. Uh, in anticipation of giving them <clears throat> some wiggle room for the day before they pushed up and they decided just to come back down again and double bottom. So we double bottoms and I got in on the next reversal that. So I'm in again. Uh, <clears throat> uh, what else have I got on? Pound New Zealand uh, got on, whoops, that's Euro New Zealand. Pound New Zealand have got on short. Again, still like that one as a short. We were ex uh, not extended. Uh, this was just a play off of uh, ADR, I think, wasn't it? I can't remember. Why did I get in Pound New Zealand? Uh, yeah, ADR move, wasn't it? <clears throat> 260, yeah. So that was about a 150 ADR push on Tuesday. Uh, so I got in as that came down. We just put in a W. So we literally just came sideways at the moment on that one. Uh, I've got Aussie New Zealand on short. Um, that's in profit. Uh, this was an ADR. This is an ADR scalp from yesterday. Um, off of the ADR move yesterday. So we had a... Really much, was it 150 we got up to, isn't it? Something like that. 150, 175 ADR hit. So got in on that reversal alert there. That's in profit. Looking to target down here. And Aussie CAD, which I've just got into again. So that's those. Uh, markets open. Uh, so got the EA running on these. Uh, on got the year running on three accounts, as you know. Um, you can automate the taking of a screenshot. Yeah, I know you can. Yeah, the trouble is, I don't want to just post um, trades. Um, I mean, with with that one, that Aussie CAD, for example, I I posted in the group that I'd moved the stop loss up into profit, so everybody. You know, I don't know if people are following me or they're just wanting to know what I'm doing or what's going on. But uh, I told everybody I'd moved the stop there. And obviously it happened overnight. So um, I posted that I put a 30 pip trailer on it. So I'm not too worried about that. And I, I don't want to just post screenshots. I want to post the analysis, why I'm taking the trade. Because that's the important bit. You know, if it, this is why I don't believe in following signal services and stuff like that, because all that's happening is trades are happening in your account. It doesn't help me, does it? It's fine having trades happening in your account, but why is the trade happening? Why is the trade being taken? What well, you know, you've got to have the reason behind it. So I want to put analysis with with the entry. Otherwise it's just uh, <clears throat> it's just a number on a chart, isn't it? 
Uh, position trading, pound New Zealand short and New Zealand dollar CAD buy. Perhaps I should get out of the latter in small profits. No, if you fancy it, take it. Um, New Zealand dollar CAD. The reason I'm long um, on New Zealand dollar CAD is on fundamentals. So uh, if you look at New Zealand dollar CAD, it is a quite a strong buy. Uh, let's filter down to the buys and sells. So New Zealand dollar CAD, uh, it's it's mixed um, fundamentals, but we've got a massive uh, advantage from cot positioning and retail sentiment. So retail, and that's the main reason for this trade yesterday that I took, was retail on New Zealand dollar CAD is uh, heavily short. Yeah, so there's eighty three percent of positions on New Zealand dollar CAD are short. So I've got cot positioning long. So the, the, the big boys are positioned long. Retail are positioned short. Retail get it wrong. So we've got the big boys long. We've got retail, which are 99% of the time on the wrong side. So if they're short on it, I want to be long. And cot is on my side. Unfortunately, we haven't got fundamentals on our side on this one. Um, otherwise, it would have been obviously a lot higher score. Um, but that was the reason for that trade. <clears throat> so sentimental bias is a plus six. Fundamentals are ever so slightly against us on it. But um, <clears throat> so there's nothing wrong with going short on it, but just bear in mind you're you're one of this 83%, and they and the market makers hunt your stops. But if you're position trading, it's irrelevant, isn't it? Doesn't mean that. Doesn't matter because you've got to stop to hunt. Uh, opening range breaks are in. That's a nice tight opening range this morning. 175, 170 on uh, E8. Uh, so we'll see where we go from there. Uh, <clears throat> I don't mean automate posting them, just taking them. Oh, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's true. Doesn't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I basically, if, if um, all my automation on the VPS with the market reverse alert CA is set up, uh, with no take profits. So um, it's just going to trade and keep me in the positions. So uh, it's either going to stop, it's only ever overnight going to stop me out with a stop that I've put in place, or it's just going to be in profit and I'm going to close it in the morning when I wake up. So when I before I go to bed, I look at all my positions and think, right, what could happen overnight? If I'm in an Aussie pair, I want to probably tighten up the stops a little bit. Um, because obviously I, I'm not going to be around if it goes mental overnight and there's some news release from Australia. So <clears throat> but I'll keep, um, I'll, I'll think about that. I might try and do some automated posting. Uh, long on the DAX. I'm just about to get stopped out by the looks of things. Cool, that's a big old whipsaw this morning. Look at that. Tight, um, tight ranges are either really good or really bad because uh, when we get a tight range, tight opening range, um, what obviously the risk uh, is is a lot higher because it's not it takes no distance at all to do that and stop you out multiple times. So tight ranges, and this is one of the reasons the version two of the EA has got this minimum in there. Um, I haven't done any thorough testing on it, but I have noticed sometimes on these tight ranges, you can get really badly whipsawed. And I did a demonstration of that in the um, in the live room yesterday when I was explaining the strategy. Uh, there was one day where we literally had bull candle, bear candle, bull candle, bear candle, bull candle, bear candle, and then it went. By that time, you're out, you're stuffed, you've hit your max loss for the day. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, and it tends to be on tight ranges, but on the converse side of that, you get a candle painting like it is at the moment. And basically, because it's such a tight range, you get a really strong move up. There's very little chance of you getting stopped out before you're back to a break even point. And those are the days that actually can bank you three to four K. So, you know, it's, uh, it's mixed basically. Uh, why did I take the MA out of uh, version two? Uh, I, my testing, uh, the moving average stop, basically, I didn't find uh, any advantage. So when I was doing the testing, 
uh, let me just get the spreadsheet up for version one and version two. So this is, well, version one, basically. But this is version one uh, when the spreadsheet decides to load. So uh, this was the DAX testing using moving averages. Um, and these were, uh, that was a longer period of time, wasn't it? I think that's why those profits are so high. Um, these were the trailing stops um, and the return on drawdown on a trailing stop, which is, all, which is what all of these are using, as you can see, is somewhere between two to three. The moving averages are the same. And the problem with uh, the, the moving average is you, you, get, you can quite often get stopped out on an outside bar on the moving average. Because if you get a, a move like that, where it basically accumulates for a bit, what happens is the moving average catches up with price. It will close you out and then it will bounce off. Well, it doesn't bounce off the moving average, of course, but it, it, will, it will go from there. The advantage of using a trailing stop in that situation is your trailing stop is only moving a fixed point. So when you get to here, your trailing stop actually doesn't advance. And then when it goes, your trailing stop goes with you. So the strike rate on a trailing stop is actually slightly better than a moving average. But to be perfectly honest, there's very little in it. Um, so that's why I decided to take it out because it's another complication. It's another thing for people to test. But if people really want it, then I'll put it back in. It's just I, I wanted to try and simplify it. And the other reason is because we've now got that tightening trailing stop in version two, um, you can kind of replicate the moving average by saying, when I get to my profit target, I want you to tighten my stop up. And what that does is kind of replicate the same thing happening with a moving average anyway. But I can put it back in. Um, but uh, So we've been whipsawed out on the highs. Looks like we're just going to get stopped out and go short. We are short already. So let's hope we get a dump. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can put it back in. But uh, there's so many set files. If you look at the set files that I published, um, there's only one that uses moving averages. All of the others use um, uh, trailing stops. And the same with the break even. Uh, there was very little advantage in break even uh, because your trailer, all, most of the set files that gave the best strike rate, the um, the trailer distance and the break even distance, uh, what was happening was all the ones that broke even before the big move started uh, were the ones that weren't making the money. If it goes, it goes. Moving to break even doesn't matter, it's gone. So that didn't really add anything to it either when I was testing that. But, you know, it, it's just, I, I can put it, I, I can put it back in there, but what I'm trying to do is try and minimize the inputs because if I put, a thousand inputs and this is the problem with the market reverse alerts yeah it's incredibly complex but it's incredibly complex to allow people to be incredibly versatile with it that's the point make it your own same with the opening image breakout i can put more in there but the more i put in there the more people will go i don't understand it and if you don't understand it you can't use it so there's no point in having it is there so um but again i can put all these things back in um but the break even uh i found you get a really um good return with a break even, but you miss all those big runners. And the thing with the version two now is because now with version two, if we get stopped out like we did here, uh, and then it goes again, version two will get you in again. So those break even stops, all that happens is it break evens you and then it goes without you. You, what well, it did go without you, but now, you get another bite of the cherry. But I can put it back in, as I say, if people really want them, uh, I don't have a problem putting them back in. I'm just trying to simplify stuff, that's all. This is a horrible whippy session this morning. <clears throat> I 
Uh, right. Uh, do, 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 do. Would you mind sharing the testing Excel? Uh, yeah, I can. I haven't finished testing yet. Eh? I literally have scratched the surface of testing with the new version. Um, I haven't tested any of this old stuff at all with it. Um, I've, I literally, I've got so much testing to do, uh, but I can share it. <clears throat> uh, the problem is I see it working well on the chart in back tests, but it's not scientific. Yeah, I, I say I, I can put it back in. It's not hard to code back in the moving average. Right, and the inputs for that. See what people's uh, thoughts are. Nobody's mentioned anything to me yet, but I don't think anybody's used it yet because obviously I only released it yesterday. So, <laughs> and there's no set files. But um, I have a sell order for seven ninety six and a buy of a hundred lots again. Uh, are you using version two or version one of the EA? I really don't know what that is. That's I, I, I can't, it, mine doesn't do it on any platform. I'm running it on MT4, MT5. I'm running it on two different brokers. I cannot make it do a hundred lot orders. There's something wrong with your settings somewhere, I think. I don't know. Um, I, I need to do some more tests on MT5, but uh, I, I don't know. Uh, you notice the winners, it's hard to notice the losers in between. Yeah, that's, you talk about backtesting. <clears throat> the thing with the backtesting is you've got to focus on the um, uh, the losers. The, the, whole, the whole purpose for me of backtesting is, you know, the winners are fine. We know if you get a strong opening range breakout, for example, that just goes like that, you don't need to worry about it. The EEA is just going to make you money. What my focus is always on when I'm back testing is when I'm, I, and obviously I do a lot of visual back testing first before I do optimization back testing. My focus is always on when it loses, how can I minimize those loses, those losses? How can I, you're never going to eliminate them, but how can you reduce the loss without harming the runners? And this is why I found the break-even setting and the moving average setting were detrimental because a trailing stop will always go with a trend. And don't forget, this is a trend breakout strategy. The whole purpose is we're trying to catch the trend breakouts. If it chops around, we can't do anything about it. You're going to get killed. Everybody's going to get killed. It's just the market accumulating. You can't win in an accumulation unless you are literally buying, every, selling every high and buying every low. And in which case, then as soon as it trends, you're going to get killed. There is no answer, but it's just about trying to minimize the losses. So, you know, automatically trailing. But, you know, if, if you get down on this trade here, for example, what I personally found was if this closes here and then we, we've we triggered on that trade and it closes down here somewhere uh, and then it pulls back a bit and then it closes down here. If I move that and that to break even, you get one candle like this will go like that. It will stop out your break evens and then it will fly down to four or five grand's worth of profit. But you are not on board because you break even your trades. And I, I found this is not just with this strategy, with all strategies I test, break even stops get stopped out. And the reason being, and I've explained this, I think, before, is because of market structure. If you take a market structure break above a high, what does price do? Retest, support, and then bounce. Yeah. So if you take a break, move to break even, you're basically saying, come and take out my stop because I know that's what you're going to do because that's what market structure is, is you coming back and retesting support. So what I'll do is I'll put my entry, at, my, my stop at support so you can have it and then it can go off with it and really annoy me. And that's what happens with break evens. And that's not just this, it's every strategy, which is why I just don't like using them. But um, but anyway, we'll see how people get on with version two and um, people will start testing with it. Uh, I do have one question on the EA. Uh, the option of trailing after profit target hit, is that the daily target or the percent profit? That's the daily target. So um, that input there, 
uh, which you can't see. Oh, what a whippy session this is. Look at this. These are the days you uh, you struggle. Um, so, uh, yeah, this one. So tighten trailer when a profit target is hit. So what that will do is when you get to, in this case, $720 uh, pounds, this one is, it's a pound account. Uh, when you get to 720 pounds, it will automatically tighten the trailer to from 60 to 20, and it will also change to on tick. So at the moment, stops are trailed on candle close. Um, what it will also do is it will start to trail on tick. So it tightens the stop up every single tick because we've got our target hit. So if this thing's going to continue to go, I want to go with it, but I don't want it to do a big drop. So it works on that. This is nothing to do with it. This uh, that That is nothing to do with the, the trailer at all. Good question, though. Oh, look at these wicks today. <clears throat> Uh, right, let's have a look at um, what's going on with everything else. Uh, so, uh, let's start off with the ADRs. I don't think there are any. No. Uh, so there's no ADRs today. This is the first day we've had a London session with no ADRs hit. Um, obviously, this is the first week back. Uh, we've had a massively volatile week. So far, uh, there's been ADRs here. We've had 225, 200, 175 ADRs all over the place this week. Um, so the market's having a bit of a rest today. Um, we had all that volatility going in. They cleared the decks completely um, for FOMC on a lot of pairs. We had a we had a ADR, as you can see here, we had ADR push to the downside. Then we had an ADR push to the upside. It was absolutely crazy. So, um, Everything's sort of calming down, it seems, today, uh, which is why we are getting a little bit of a whippy open. Um, <clears throat> so nothing hit so far. Uh, we've got weeklies. Aussie CAD, uh, I'm already on. Aussie CAD short. Uh, that's, again, partly why I took this Aussie CAD, because we had hit that weekly range on Tuesday. We did the entire week's range in one day. Um, so I got in short because this thing was obviously... Uh, super extended, uh, but that was based on the Aussie dollars potentially being able to supply coal to China again, which will boost the Aussie economy. Um, it isn't going to help too much with anything else but GDP for them, but uh, the market certainly liked it. And then they suddenly realized that it was only uh, thinking about it. Uh, so they reversed the entire position. So uh, uh, I'm in short on it because until that is announced, uh, it's not actually happening. Aussie dollar yen, we've also got a weekly extension as well. Onto the hourly, uh, we can see them better. Uh, so we, we've just obviously flown since Tuesday. Um, big, big, big move up yesterday. Uh, this I was watching like a hawk yesterday to see if we could double top. We didn't get there. Um, so if we come up and take out yesterday's high today, uh, will that be an ADR? No. Uh, if, if we get an ADR alert today, on Aussie dollar yen, I will probably consider shorting this um, because we are right up, uh, extended 125% of its normal range. Um, the yen, I want to be selling uh, because of intervention. Um, and we've got a lovely double top opportunity there for the market to come and sweep. So uh, I really like the look of that at ADR if we can get to it, but we'll see. Um, so I'm going to be watching that and monitoring that this morning. Had yen. Uh, we've got extended as well. We've got a nice double top potential coming up on that one. That's another 125 ADR. Uh, again, uh, extended, you know, the week, when you've done an entire week's move in a day, you have to be a little careful because there's, normally there's something fundamental going on. There's nothing detrimental that I can see about the yen. They did a massive bond sale as well last week. Um, you know they're, they're not mucking about they are trying to power up the yen so i don't see why that happened there's no fundamental reason for it it's just manipulation but it's a lot it's an adr in a day uh, a weekly range in a day so uh, if this can continue to push up obviously uh i'll be jumping on board probably on that one as well um but 
I'm not sure I really want to get too much extension on the yens. So we'll see what happens. So Aussie yen and CAD yen, just keep an eye on those two today. If either of them get up to resistance, I'll be looking for a reversal alert, but I probably won't take both. I'll take one or the other. Uh, Euro odd, again, massive extension to the downside. I said, didn't I, yesterday? I don't think, did I post this one in the grid yesterday? Uh, was this one of the ones I posted and said I'm not taking it? Uh, yeah, it was. So I posted this yesterday in the Telegram group, uh, Euro odd idea. Um, so that's what I posted yesterday. Um, uh, looking for that 175 bounce and we got it it's straight away so it, I didn't take it because I had too much Aussie dollar exposure but um, that was a lovely trade if you took it um, but um, fundamentals on euro odd uh, um, are, are completely range bound so you know, you can take it in either direction. There's no real advantages anywhere at the moment. Cot is long. Um, so that was another good reason for taking a long on that yesterday. The market sentiment is long on it from a futures perspective, but difficult to tell. Um, God, this is a horrible mess this morning, isn't it? Can't even, it can't even get below a pre-market low look. It hasn't even attempted the pre-market highs. I got a feeling this is going to go long. But we'll see. Uh, right, Euro odd uh, covered that one. And we've got New Zealand dollar yen again, massively extended. Um, big strong push. So this is a, another tricky one. I'd much rather be shorting this than longing it, but there's not really any reason to take a trade where we are at the moment. We're just kind of sitting in no man's land uh, on this one. We've got this accumulation here, uh, which was this nice area of balance previously, which we tapped into and bounced off, which we're now retesting. So there is potential for us to put in an end pattern reversal there. So they might come and take yesterday's high, in which case then that might be a good opportunity for a short as well. Um, but the thing that worries me about all of these yen pairs at the moment is that um, we've got this, obviously, the, they, when they retested the propulsion gap, you know, they, this was intervention at which they obviously have added their positions to. So um, I'm just worried about them trying to, the, the other market participants, trying to get this gap filled. Um, and it's the same across the board, look. On all these yen pairs we've got a lot of uh we've got a big old gap to come and fill so when you see these gaps all these propulsion gaps especially big ones like this they act like magnets the question is is this tested and are we now staying short on this um so for me this retest for a couple of days when we broke below it we created this propulsion gap at adr that for me would be on swiss yen for example where I would be looking if we are just going to continue market structure that's the sort of movement I would look for but there is potential for them to come back up into here so again it's really tricky yen is yen's been tricky all year um but you know logical area to take a trade from there's better pairs like Aussie dollar New Zealand out there we're going to have limit orders sitting up there we're also going to have limit orders sitting up there so there's going to be a lot of selling pressure here and when they get back up into here, there's going to be a lot of selling pressure here as well. So if you get in anywhere around here with a couple of ADR stop on it, or an ADR stop even, to be honest. It's ADR, 133. You know, so an ADR stop is going to be somewhere around here above that high. So if you got in anywhere around here with a stop above ADR, you've got a high probability trade, haven't you? Um, so Aussie yen is probably the best. Um, CAD yen, again, I want to see us hitting some kind of resistance before I look to uh, to get in. There's, there's just too much space there on the euro. Uh, the pound is way too much. Uh, New Zealand. So Aussie yen, um, for me, or potentially the CAD yen, isn't it? 
Aussie Yen and CAD Yen would be the two that I'd be looking for, potentially. Uh, Shroud, uh, can we trail stop loss on the basis of gap fill imbalance rebalancing? Uh, you can do what you like. Yeah, of course you can. Are you, are you asking about any? Yeah, I have, none of my EAs can do anything like that. No, nothing I've built anyway. Uh, but yeah, you could you could use um, you could. I mean, that, that's a good a good strategy on sort of lower time frames. You know, if you're gonna um, if you're long, you could trail underneath these because obviously there's a high probability of uh, finding buyers there. Can you add this feature to the eight? No, I can't. No, it's too complicated. I, it, it doesn't. They, the, the best strategies in the world are the simplest strategies. The more complexity you put into a strategy, the worse it works. I have tried to build EAs based on wide range bar strategy. I haven't succeeded because there's too many. Which ones do you want to pick? Which of these, where are you going to try your stop? Here, 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 or here? And what happens when the imbalance gets filled like that? Just use a trailer. And get out and get back in again. It, it's too. It really is the simplest strategy. You know what the simplest strategy in the world is? Uh, it's called a. Um, my brain's gone. What's it called? Uh, oh my god, my brain. Uh, Smash day, by Larry Williams. Smash day candle. Yeah, simplest strategy in the world. This is. Uh, look at any stock index, uh, or anything really. Um, when you get a close below a low like these yeah just go long and get out when you're in profit really simple he invented it 20 years ago or something it still works today the more complexity you put in it only take it when you've got rsi only take it when you've got this that and the other what happens is you filter out so many trades that the ones you take still have the same odds of working but what is happening is you're just only taking a few of them rather than the, and you're missing all the big ones, the big ones that work, because you had too many rules and too many filters. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can't really build any more into it. As I said, 45,000 lines of code. If you want me to add another 20,000 in, it's going to take you two days to backtest a month. It's just not possible. The two, it's too complex, unfortunately. Um, but I can't do everything. <laughs> we are good. Aussie New Zealand uh, is the only RSI extension we've got, and that's on the four hour. Uh, so that is still extended, I'm sure, on that already. We've got lovely wick rejection uh, up here. Um, that resistance that uh, we're at, is that a resistance on here? Yeah. So um, this level here that I drew in, uh, we've literally tapped into it to the pit. Look. Um, so that's coming down nicely. This is just an ADR reversal for me, though, this trade at the moment. So um, we'll see what happens with it. But that's the only RSI extension we've got this morning. Uh, looks like I'm going to get stopped out on this long. This is a whippy, whippy one today. Possible to one day add the option of closing all trades when a specific amount of drawdown on the market reversal EA. Uh, yeah, it already does that. Or an option of getting in a trade on a retest. Yeah, it already does that. It already does all of that. <clears throat> so market reversal alerts EA. Um, you've got, that's the opening range breakout EA. Let's move over to that one. <laughs> market reversal alerts EA. Um, uh, your entry method is on initial reversal alert, or you can have a reversal retest. So that will only take trades on retest. And down here in the position trading area, you have um, here, uh, close, uh, close all when X money in profit. I profit, that should say in profit. Uh, close all when in profit. Yeah, and you've got um, close all when in loss. Yeah, so close in loss 
when at X money. So if you put in there 2000 minus, uh, it will shut all your trades out when you get to 2000 and drawdown. So it does all that already. All covered in the manual and the video. But this is what I say, you know, this is what I'm saying about adding features and functionality. People miss all this. There's so much in here. You look at this and you go, right, I need a degree in economics to even operate the thing. And I just don't want to make it. Uh, I don't want to build another one of these because it's, I, well, I mean, I should, it's the best thing to build because it's the best thing. It works best, but the more complex it is, the more difficult it is to use. Uh, so stopped out. This is going to be uh, a lost day today by the looks of things, unless we get a strong break. But this is just literally uh, running liquidity constantly today. Uh, didn't realize there's options were there. Yeah, cool. Uh, trust me, I've watched all your videos, just failed to realize it. <laughs> Trouble is, um, with the market reverse alerts, yeah video specifically because it's so long you have probably fall asleep halfway through <laughs> you need to watch it three times but what you need to do is binge watch it uh, uh and then you need to watch it for 20 minutes then come back two hours later watch the next 20 minutes then come back two hours later watch the next 20 minutes and keep doing that until you've watched it all because you'll be awake for 20 minutes at a time your mind drifts and like i said there's so many settings uh and they all impact each other as well. And that's that's the thing. But, it, you know, trading's complicated. It's why the simple EAs don't tend to work, because you need to be more complicated. Um, if it was that easy, everybody would be billionaires, wouldn't they? Uh, right. So there's nothing else to look at there um, from RSI extension perspective. So let's have a quick look at the fundamentals, um, see if there's any other opportunities today. So. Um, longs and shorts. Um, we've got Aussie New Zealand, which we know about already in Aussie New Zealand um, as a short. So uh, it's a it's a strong sell um, from a fundamental perspective. We've got uh, market participants on our side. Commitment of traders is is on our side. All short uh, retail. We haven't got anything on yet at the moment, but if we get more retail sentiment today, that will help us as well. So Aussie New Zealand. Obviously, I'm just in the one position at the moment with a scalp, um, but I am expecting this to potentially come down. The spanner in the works is obviously what was said yesterday with China. So we could have some kind of fundamental shift happening um, where we're going to get more strength in the Aussie because they're now going to be opening their economy up a little bit more with exports to China. When exports to China are of coal will start, more exports will start. They had real restrictions put on the Australians because their main trade partner is China. So... Um, a lot of their uh, mineral exports go out there. So uh, when that stops, obviously, when they lock down in China, your customer's gone. That obviously hurts your economy. So uh, I've got a stop on it anyway. Um, so if we get another huge couple of ADR hit, then I'll be out. But um, I'm going to give it some room and I will just get out with a small profit on that. I think it's only a couple of hundred because um, it is really a scalp trade, that one. But uh, be happy to take shorts if we get any more opportunities short on it. Aussie dollar, US dollar is also a short. So again, on this one, um, looking for extensions. Um, kind of missed this one yesterday. Didn't get there. That's what I was looking for yesterday. Um, it actually turned here. So, uh, you know, this is the thing you never know with the banks. We can't see where the liquidity is. Um, they know where the liquidity is because when they're buying into this stuff and there's nobody left to sell to them, that's when they turn around. Um, that was where all the liquidity was. There wasn't any there. Otherwise, they would have gone and got it. So uh, that was yesterday, obviously. Uh, today, we might have a load up there. Aussie US. Let's have a look. Uh, Aussie US uh, is pretty mixed, but most people are short. So what that's saying is all the liquidity, most people are short on it. That means all the liquidity is sitting up here. So we may well come back and attempt that today. If we do, that's where I'd like to get in short. Uh, so uh, any RSI extension to the upside, any ADR hit to the upside, uh, four hour, you're not going to get anywhere near it. I don't know. Unlikely. 
it needed a really big, strong move. If you get RSI extended on the four hour, it's gone way too far. So, uh, but hourly RSI extensions, uh, M15 extensions on RSI, you'll be up here. But by that time, you'll get an ADR reversal alert anyway. So, uh, and that will be yesterday's high sweep of liquidity, which will be lovely. So, uh, watch out for that one, Aussie US. Uh, Swiss yen. Uh, this is a strong buy. So the yens, when you're looking at sentiment, there's a little caveat with this fundamental report. When you're looking at um, sentiment with anything to do with the yen, you have to take um, inflation, inflation change and uh, interest rates with a pinch of salt, meaning disregard them. Because the yen has not changed its interest rates for a long, 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 long time. It doesn't change its interest rates. So you can't use any interest rate or inflation divergence as a um, uh, a scorecard because they don't pay any attention to inflation or interest rates. Uh, they, they intervene. They do it differently. Uh, GDP will affect it. Unemployment will affect it. And obviously, we haven't got any cop positioning in retail. So you've got to take uh, all of this basically off. So score on this one really is a plus two, three, four, five. So it's still a long, um, but I would be worried at the moment about longing anything against the yen. So um, the yen, I've kind of I've got a more fundamental short bias on it just because of the intervention they've been doing. Uh, they're really, really strict at the moment about not letting their currency devalue because they're in so much trouble. So uh, I kind of play these with a uh, a slight bias um, the other side. If you look at these, for example, New Zealand dollar yen, US dollar yen, uh, and Euro yen, the reason these are a five, a four, and a four is mainly because of COP. Yeah. So um, the commitment of traders, they are all long on this at the moment, but I would suspect they're not going to stay massively long on them um, with what's been going on. So I kind of uh, ignore the yens a little bit. Uh, with anything yen, what I would be looking for is, uh, which is what I've gone through already this morning, is double tops and double bottoms. Um, so I'll be looking basically uh, more double tops, really. But I'll be looking for opportunities to try and short it at any, uh, any decent levels. So that's really what I'm going to focus on with those at the moment. I'm trying to steer clear of it because it's just... It's too difficult at the moment. Uh, Euro Swiss, Euro Pound. Um, uh, so Euro Swiss obviously is a complete sideways mess at the moment. Um, uh, it's long bias. So as you can see, it's gradually climbing. So with this one, if you do manage to get any ADR hits, I mean, it's highly unlikely you'll ever get an ADR hit on this thing. Um, but if you do get an ADR hit to the downside, be looking to long it. If you do get any RSI extensions to the downside, again, tricky. Um, I mean, every, everyone is working, but it, it's a choppy mess. It's an absolute choppy mess at the moment. Uh, so the, op the opportunity was there yesterday down at the lows. But um, I'd be looking for longs on it. Uh, I'd really want sentiment on my side on that which you haven't got at the moment. You want the retail gang to be the wrong side of it, really. Um, just to give you a hand, I think. But uh, Euro pound, uh, same sort of thing, looking for longs. That was the opportunity yesterday. I'm not sure if I posted that one yesterday, but that was a nice double bottom opportunity yesterday, which worked very, very nicely. We didn't get an RSI extension on it. We didn't get an ADR extension on it. Um, but yeah, it was a lovely, lovely long yesterday. Uh, we got RSI divergence. Oh, no, we didn't. Not quite. Yeah, we did. Talking about. Uh, so we got lovely RSI divergence yesterday down here. Then the reversal alert happened. So that was your entry. Beautiful RSI divergence entry on the reversal alert. Taking out the liquidity. Spot on. But it happened really late in the day. So I wasn't around for that. Uh, but yeah, that went nicely. Missed it. Um, uh, Euro US dollar short, so Euro US dollar and pound US dollar shorts. Um, so this is obviously based mainly on US dollar strength. Um, we are up at the propulsion gap at the moment, which was obviously 
here um, caused by that accumulation break. We've retested it, rejected, retested, rejected, retested, rejected. We haven't quite got there this morning. So, you know, the market, they're not really interested in longs. They're, they're going short at the moment. So unless we get anything fundamentally uh, negative, uh, like really negative on the US dollar coming out of um, non-farm employment later today or the unemployment figures tomorrow, um, we should hopefully see some strengthening in the US dollar. Um, so looking for short opportunities on this. This isn't actually a bad place to get in right now. Um, we haven't got any extension on RSI, even on the hourly. But you can see obviously what's going on. We've been stuck in an accumulation off of this propulsion move. They've just been buying, buying it up constantly, every time. But there's been no momentum. There's been no way of getting forward. So they've basically just given up. So this is what we're calling price discovery. Yeah, so you have a price discovery and then you have balance. And the balance is where the market is happy to trade. But every single attempt to go higher has been failed. So the sellers have stepped on. And yesterday, or rather on Tuesday, we had that tank and we broke those lows. So we're back up into balance again. So what's going to happen from here fundamentally should be a drop at the moment. So that's what everything is pointing to right now. So the fact that we've managed to break that low would suggest that this is a retest. So thinking market structure, we've got a high, a low, a lower high. We should be putting a lower low in. So right here at this propulsion gap is where we should be starting to enter a position. So if you want to get into this one, you can do. Um, obviously, you've got a reverse alert opportunity there. So that is going to alert. If it does push up today and take out these highs, you'll be able to get in a reversal alert up here, which will again be up in that propulsion gap. So that looks like a pretty good short. Um, and I haven't got any exposure on it. So I might have a go at that. I'm just going to have a quick look at, I've got pound US dollar short, haven't I? See, the problem, the problem is the pound US dollar and the euro US dollar at the moment, they are fairly similar. Um, obviously, this, the, from a principle of price action and what is going on, it's the same thing. It's a retest short. I'm already in this. So it, what I don't really want to do is over leverage pound and euro US dollar. up. They don't obviously work exactly the same way, but they will move similarly because they are of similar strength at the moment. As you can see, um, it, there's actually the pound US dollar is a better one, which is why I'm on it. Um, Euro US dollar, we've got no cop positioning. It's purely fundamental. So, you know, it's a difficult one, but I would rather be short on the pound uh, than the euro. But um, that is still a good one. So take your pick. If you're going to position trade it, you can get in on the next reversal alert. Uh, and you've got about an ADR. Also up or one and a half ADRs up to that high and that high there. So from a position trading perspective, if we zoom out a little bit, um, we're back down in this balance, price discovery, balance, price discovery, potentially that. So if you get in here, you can get in again up there and assume that we're going to come back down. And if we hold this as a range, this area here, doesn't really matter where you get in up here, you'll get out somewhere down there. And then if it comes back up, it doesn't really matter. I don't think it's likely that we're going to uh, continue much more to the upside, though. But you never know. There's no reason. If you look at the. Um, this, the euro obviously powered up. Lagarde is very, very bullish on the euro at the moment. But even doesn't matter how bullish Lagarde is on the euro. The US dollar is the world currency and it will beat everything. Um, assuming the fundamentals are there to back it up. And that's the danger we have is when suddenly the Fed comes out and goes, ah, we're not going to increase interest rates anymore. In fact, we're going to drop them. That's when that's going to go mental. Um, but until that happens, we should be looking for short opportunities. And you see how difficult it is for the euro to make any progress. So virtually every time we've had a push, we've had a lovely pullback, push, lovely pullback, push, nice pullback, push, accumulation, drop. Uh, so you know, getting in and out of this one isn't really too difficult at the moment. So I wouldn't be too worried about taking a short on it. But 
I just don't want to overexpose with my pound position. So I'm going to leave that for the minute. Uh, next, we've got uh, Pound New Zealand, big short, already on that as well. Um, again, it's just sideways at the moment, but we are just grinding down. So uh, there's very little movement on this. It's very difficult to make money on it. Um, it's going to be very easy to scale into it because there's so much resistance everywhere on this thing. It's just got resistance everywhere. So anywhere up here, ADRs, I'll be adding another position to it in the same way as I did with the pound US dollar, um, but expecting that to continue down. Uh, so you could take a reverse alert on that one. Short, uh, I had one this morning on that M pattern. Uh, there's no extensions on RSI or anything at the moment. We did have there pretty much, which is kind of where I got in, but we haven't gone anywhere. So. Still a short. Uh, New Zealand CAD and New Zealand yen. So yeah, New Zealand CAD long. Uh, already long on this one as well. Again, so obviously I got out of that unfortunately there. Um, I was expecting, I was expecting that, but I didn't get it. Um, and I said yesterday, didn't I? Uh, there's a probability that may well bounce from there. So uh, we're just basically, basically triple bottoming now. If this breaks, that's when I'll start to be a little bit worried on this one um, because we've not really got, if you look at the, the structure on this, there's not really any decent support or resistance. We've got an accumulation there. which will probably hold. So an ADR hit to the downside on that one. Um, I'll be out of it by then because I've got quite a tight stop on this one. Uh, but uh, that would be where I'd look to get in. What's my risk on that? 350, yeah, it's quarter of a percent. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to keep it really tight at the moment. Um, but if you want to position trade that, this is a double bottom trade basically. But if you want to position trade it, um, this area here, let me just draw it on properly, is where I'd look to take a second. And then your third, obviously, would be somewhere around there, uh, wherever you fancy, really. But uh, obviously, if you get using the market reverse alert EA, it will just get you in automatically anyway when you get half an ADR or whatever you set apart. So that is 96, which is one ADR. And then from there down is around about another ADR. So if you're scaling in half an ADR apart, you'd have three on by the time you get there, five on by the time you get there. If you get all the way down to there with no kind of pullback, you're going to be massively extended. Um, up to you, but I like that New Zealand CAD short, uh, long still. Uh, US dollar CAD, so all the US dollars are along. Um, again, fundamentals are mixed at the moment. Uh, we will see what happens with unemployment. Uh, if we get uh, positive, strong unemployment figures, i.e. unemployment dropping um, on Friday, we should see a really good move off of the uh, US dollar. And that will flip these into sorts of the fives and sixes territory with most pairs. Cot market is positioned long on it. Um, the retail crowd is also positioned long on it at the moment. So we haven't got them on the side, hence that being a negative, which is holding us back. So uh, if we can see some retail sentiment starting to go the other way, that will give uh, a load of liquidity for the market to go and grab. So all of these US pairs looking for long opportunities. Nice one there on the US dollar CAD this morning at support. Uh, so we've just taken the liquidity down there. Uh, we've got the nice reversal out on the hourly. And again, you can see this is fairly range bound at the moment. Um, Canadian dollar not really got a lot of strength off the back of what's going on with oil. Um, so yeah, nice looking long opportunity there. Uh, what is the retail on that? Must order this differently. Uh, yeah, they're all long. Yeah, see, I mean, don't really want them long. Everybody's bought this double bottom, uh, which means they're probably going to come and take that out. So down here, 
ADR hit to the downside, I'd be interested. Uh, but you could take that. There's a good chance that might go from there. Um, <clears throat> US dollar Swiss is an absolute mess at the moment. Um, we're, we're completely sideways. We have just broken out. Uh, well, we've tried to break out of this high. Uh, we've pulled back into support and bounced. Um, so this looks like a good spot potentially for a buy on the US dollar Swiss as well. So again, you've got the market on your side. Retail, though, however, is also long on it. Uh, so, um, massively long. So, you know, this is why this is coming down today. Yeah. The market is hugely long. And this is what intraday sentiment is all about. The market's massively long. So, what's it doing coming down? Why? Because they know where the stops are, they know where the liquidity is. Yeah. 88% of market participants are long at the moment. Where's their liquidity? Yeah. What's the market doing? Finding that liquidity and using it to power up their move. So where it's going to turn, we don't know. But if we get down to a double bottom here at 92.571, which I'm going to stick an alert on, um, just above, I'll be interested. <clears throat> US dollar Swiss. Um, so just above basically um, that line, but obviously yesterday's low potentially is a, is a good spot for them to take as well. But that's where I'm going to start paying attention uh, for a potential move. And that move may well come off the news this afternoon. Uh, we've got the unemployment claims, obviously non-farm employment this afternoon. So we might find that that happens there. Uh, what's going on with this DAX? Jesus. Okay, so I'm closed out. Uh, oh, almost max loss today. Chop. Ups. Um, closed out max loss on that account. Chop. Can't win. You can't win in that situation. Never. But, nah. <clears throat> uh, right. Uh, US dollar Swiss. So we covered that one. And US dollar yen is the only other thing. So from an intraday sentiment point of view, again, if you want to use intraday sentiment for um, just sort of scalping, and again, five-minute market reversal alerts is kind of what you want to use. Uh, there's not really any good shorts. Uh, the fives and the sixes are the ones that I'm the most interested in, um, purely because you've got cop on your side with all of those. Um, if you go down to the lower numbers, you see you start having uh, pop being a little bit less. Um, so I prefer the fives and the sixes, but um, the less obviously uh, you go down, the, the weaker the, the chances of getting a reversal are. So these are your main opportunities today. Aussie New Zealand um, is, uh, that's only a minus four on cot, you see. So it's intraday sentiment we really want to look at. Tell you what the best way to filter this probably is. It's the minus two and the plus twos. Um, so US dollar Swiss for a long. No, hang on. No, because that's the opposite way, isn't it? That's saying we don't want to be on that. New Zealand dollar CAD is the only one. That, there is nothing today available, really. Just New Zealand dollar CAD. Um, which I'm already on. But again, same opportunities as yesterday, really. Um, <clears throat> Dear on strange game. The only winning move is not to play. <laughs> yeah. You get day. I mean, these days like this, you. you it's very difficult to win. I've got one more long on this. Um, I mean, I can take more positions, you see. This is the thing. Uh, I've got max drawdown on this account is $2,500. I'm choosing to minimize at twelve fifty. But, you know, if this thing now goes like that, parabolic, that's going to be wiped out and I'm going to have a positive day. Uh, the open uh, is messy. If you want to stop these, um, 
Yeah, it is from War Games. Yeah, I was trying to think where that was from. I was like, I recognise that from somewhere. Um, there you go. Uh, it's just stopped out on that one. Hit max loss. Um, hasn't updated, but it will have updated on the because this isn't running on the same magic number. Uh, but basically, the EA just got me out of that because that's hit 12.50. Yeah, so entered there. It's pulled back, and it's got me out on 12.50. Uh, so, yeah, so with these types of days, with the opening range strategy, the only way really uh, to win is not to take the five-minute opening range break. Um, but you take a wider break. So when you get an open which is choppy, um, it creates a range. At some point today, it is going to smash out of that range and do something. Um, the problem is, and it's not a problem that you can solve, is where do you get out? Where, which ones, what do you take? Do you take the five minute, uh, the 15 minute? Do you take the 30 minute? Yeah. So we're looking at what? 1, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. We're one hour into the session we haven't gone anywhere yet yeah there is no opening range breakout today uh, so if you used a 15 minute opening range and a 30 minute opening range today you would have had a you'd be long stopped out short in so you're in short at the moment but you've only had one stop out so you went long there you stopped out you flipped short and you're still short in drawdown, but you've only had one loss instead of me having multiple losses, which is hit max daily loss. But you know, if you run that set file, which will be profitable as well, you're going to get a lot less trades um, and you're going to miss the vast majority of those five, 10, 15 minutes smash parabolic opening breaks that make you three to four K a day. So, you know, it, it's, this is what I'm saying with these set files and the testing, it swings and roundabouts. Uh, there's two and a half thousand combinations I've tested on one particular type of permutation of strategy uh, settings, and they all come back as profitable. So it doesn't matter what you pick. It's just some days you'll be winners and some days you'll be losers. Tomorrow we'll make two and a half grand. Yeah. Yesterday we made two grand, 1,800. You know, it just it, it's one of those things. It's a long term game strategy. It's a long term edge. It's not going to work every day. Uh, but then that's the thing that annoys everybody. And it is annoying. There's nothing you can do about it. But you can't forecast this. The only time you know you're going to get a choppy open is when you get a choppy open. By the time you've had the choppy open, it's too late to change. So what I could do now is change the settings on the EA and say, what I want you to do is uh, take a 30 minute or a 60 minute opening range break. So what it will do is it will then go, right, okay, I'm gonna take a break of that. But then we've got a massive range. Um, but look at the, the speed this is going, it's more likely to do that, isn't it? Something like that if it goes, rather than parabolic. So it's just not, not conducive. And you'll find a lot of people will be, uh, will be dead today. It's just the way it goes. But that's why you keep your risk this is what this setting is for with this strategy, uh, is to make sure that you do not blow your account. I've still got $1,250 of potential drawdown I can take today. Um, and I'm risking uh, small amounts on it. So I could take another 10 trades today if I wanted to, um, which I might have a look at the New York session, but we'll see. Uh, right, that's all I've got for you this morning. Um, I'm going to be working on set files this morning for the new ORB version two. Um, uh, I might put a quick poll in the group as well um, and see if people really, really want the break even stuff. But uh, I don't think anybody's had a chance to do any testing yet with the new one. So, uh, but I'm, you know, I can put it back in. But like I said, I probably won't use it. I can do a set file for it, but as I say, it doesn't matter if you use trailing stop or moving average stop. Uh, it still works. It's just a different way of getting stopped out. 
I just think the accumulations that you get are the ones that hurt you the most and that you get more of those with the moving average version, which is what I found. But equally, on the parabolic days, you get out faster and make more money. Again, swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Some will, some moving average versions will make you more money, but other times it will make you less money. So there is no right or wrong. It's just in and out. It's, it's either going to go or it's not. And when it goes, how you get out is the difference between making 1500 or 1300 or 1800. You know, but if you do that 10 days, some days you make 18, some days you make 13. There's an average. The average is always a positive. So that's all we're interested in, really, isn't it? At the end of the day, making, uh, finding a strategy that's got an edge that makes money. So um, how you use it is uh, is up to you. Look at this thing today. Horrible. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So the 30 minute is there and there. The 60 minute is there and there. So if you use a 30, 60, you'd be better off today. But then if you go and look at yesterday, if you'd have used a 30, 60 yesterday, Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Yeah, if you'd used a thirty yesterday, you would have got long there. Would you have stopped out on that? Depends on again, it depends on your settings, isn't it? What was your what was your trailer? Uh, yeah, forty-five. I mean, using not, there's not many set, set files that use less than a forty point stop, so you probably would have got stopped out. Uh, and then possibly re entered there and got that second bite of the cherry. The 60 minute breakout was at the same level. Oh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 30, 35, 40. No, 60 was there. So if you'd have taken a 30, 60 yesterday, which would have, we don't know if it'll work today yet because it hasn't moved, but um, that is what you would have got. You would have got an entry. Possible stop out, re entry, second entry, possible stop out, re entry. So you possibly would have had two stop outs, but you would have got two entries onto that. Uh, actually, what I'll do, let's put a moving average on there and I'll show you the difference. Um, trend. Oh, where am I? Moving average. Okay, so this this is the reason for um, the the moving average uh, removal, if you like. So this is your nine SMA, which is the main moving average people use on five minute time frame for scalping. Uh, when it pushes up like this, you get stopped out quick, which is great because you get your your profit nicely. But what happens is because if you'd have had a 40 or 50 or whatever trailing stop, you will be able to survive things like that and gain that. Whereas the moving average would have stopped you out there, stopped you out there, pushed up, stopped you out there. You would have been below it here. Um, and then it pushes up and stops you out there. So you see how many times a moving average stops you out as opposed to even a tight 30 point trailer will, will follow, you know, not follow price like that. And get you out there but this is where this new setting comes in for tightening the stop so we only tighten the stop when we get to our target so if that is target yeah fine and this new feature of tightening the stop does the same as a moving average stop which is why i switched it over to that it it, it literally kind of replicates that but it only replicates that when we are near our target when we've actually got a load of money in the bank rather than stopping us out for these tiny little amounts and then never getting a re-entry. Uh, and this is the whole point of version two is the re-entry system. Um, so when we're doing re-entries, we don't want to trail and stop out up there because it misses all of this. 
because it never gets an opportunity to get back in at the top, at the highest of the range. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's just what I found anyway in my testing. But like you say, Diamond, if you're still in here, um, there are times when this will have done better as well. So, you know, it, it, it makes very little difference in the long term, but I don't, um, I don't have a problem putting it back in. It's just extra. Um, yeah, I mean, and here, look, the nine, I suppose the, adva the advantage of the nine moving average with this type of price action is when you're getting short down here, and it pushes back up you'd have got out there but that's where your stop was anyway on that one uh you'd have got back in there on that one and then it would have stopped you out there instead of stopping you out there so in choppy on choppy days the moving average might have a slight advantage but it's going to cut your big winners short. So again, it's I don't know. It needs testing, doesn't it? Really. Maybe what I'll do is um, I'll rebuild a version, and I'll stick it back in, and I'll I'll do some testing and just see what impact it has. Um, and if you've got any tests you'd think you'd like to run with it, I can run the tests, and uh, we'll have a look. Again, this is what development is all about um, with strategy. It's finding out, but uh, finding out whether it gives you an advantage. You know, if it, if it reduces drawdown, increases strike rate, or increases profit, add it. If it doesn't, scrap it. That's how you do strategy development. That's how I, that's how I started strategy development in the RSI. I was like, let's take every entry on the RSI. What happens? I get a 52% strike rate with a one-to-one -one risk reward. Okay, so when I've taken every one of those, what if I only took it when we had divergence, which we haven't got in this case, but I'm just pretending it's divergence. Um, uh, then what it did with a one-to-one -one was increased my strike rate to 59%, but it reduced the profitability because I took less trades. So my trades went from 250 down to 200. So actually, I made less money because I got into less positions. Although I won more of them, I got into less. So the profitability, the return on drawdown, which is the most important factor, was lower. Uh, I'm just making figures up. These aren't real. I'm just explaining how strategy, how I do strategy development. Um, and, you know, then let's add a moving average to it. Um, does that increase the strike rate? No, the strike rate goes down to 45%. Uh, but what we found was we could get a one to two risk reward at 45%, which increased our return on drawdown. Okay, that's brilliant. Let's add a moving average into it. Uh, and then you add another filter in, and it's all about filtering the positions. So you have a base you start with, like an RSI indicator, and you see how good it is. Let's take every single one with a two to one or a trailing stop of 30 or whatever factor you want to use and see how it performs and then add something to it and see if it makes a positive or negative impact. And you just keep repeating and rinsing and repeating and rinsing and repeating until you get to a point where you can't improve it anymore. And that's where you go, right, well, let's trade it. And that's what I did with the ORB with all these filters. I've tried, I've tried RSI filter, I've tried ADR filters, I've tried stochastic filters, I've tried trailing stops, moving average stops, ATR based stops. I've tried loads of stuff with it and came to the conclusion that a basic trailing stop is just as good as everything else. And it's really easy to implement. So, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, um, I've only, you know, like I say, I've only tested certain things. There's another million combinations out there I haven't tested. So, you know, I'm always open to ideas for uh, adding new filters and testing things. Um, but obviously, you just need to bear in mind the more you have, the more indicators you have, the more complex a strategy is, the less likelihood is of a uh, forward test working because you've got too many things reliant on one signal 
So uh, the best strategies in the world, as I say, are one or two signals, and that's it. So RSI extended, reversal alert, in. Two, there's only two things in that strategy. Or ADR extended, reversal alert, in. That's it, there's two things. Um, those are the ones that work the best. The more complex it becomes, the more difficult it is to actually replicate it. Anywho, um, so that's all I've got for you today. There's not a lot more opportunities than um, that I can see that I'm already in. So uh, I'm in everything that I want to be in at the moment. Um, but keep an eye on the fundamentals today. Um, see if we get any changes in these. Uh, this is updated every hour, by the way, now. So this starts updating at 6 a.m. And it stops updating at 10, uh, 9 p.m. UK time. So it covers, uh, it's live updating every hour from uh, start of London to end of New York, pretty much. So uh, on the hour, every hour. I should put that on there, shouldn't I, really? I'll update that page and, um, <clears throat> and put that in there. Uh, and the video is up on the opening range breakout EA. If you want to re rewatch it. Um, I need to download and I'm just going to cut some bits out of it. Like the stream is starting soon at the beginning and stuff. I'm just going to chop a few bits out of it. Um, I, well, actually only that because everything else is fine. Uh, so I will, I'll post that properly, um, on the site. Uh, but at the moment it's just linked to YouTube, the YouTube version. So, but that's up there to go and watch if you missed it. Um, so yeah, I'll be back at 2.20 this afternoon. Um, nothing much is moving today at the minute. So uh, for the New York session, uh, I'll probably trade this account um, with the opening range breakout EA today because uh, the other accounts obviously have hit their max losses today on this nightmare shop that we've got. Still nightmare chop. I might leave that on there actually. Um, still a nightmare chop. Look, not going anywhere today. The only thing you can do today is kind of buy somewhere around here and sell somewhere somewhere around there until it decides to do something. So again, the opposite, mean reversion instead of breakout. But I can guarantee you the first time you take a mean reversion trade, it's going to go and that's going to be the one that's going to take the day. It's always the way, isn't it? As long as you're using good risk reward, you'll be fine. But uh, yeah, nasty session today. I uh, haven't actually covered the indices, have I? Completely forgot. Or oil. Let's have a quick look at what's going on with oil. Uh, my God, that collapsed yesterday, didn't it? Wasn't paying attention to oil yesterday at all. Oh, look where it collapsed to, everybody. Uh, so again, as I said, oil's a, oil is a buy at the moment. Um, speculation is $107 a barrel this year. Uh, so yeah, buy the dips. Uh, that was the dip. I think I said that yesterday morning, didn't I? I said buy the dips on oil. Uh, they came back down basically and took out liquidity at the lows. There. Uh, and they've run with it. So all the liquidity was sitting there. That's gone. Now they're off. So oil looks like a good buy. Oh, I'm tempted. I'm so tempted on that. Uh, I don't know what my lot sizing should be on this. Wow, massive. Okay. <laughs> uh, 55. 44. So five times that. Five times two is 100, isn't it? So one contract long. I'm going long on oil. Not 12. <laughs> going long one. 
Uh, basically, you've got a market reversal alert down there. I'll give it uh, $250. Quarter of a percent risk. Uh, so long on oil, uh, assuming this is a liquidity run, and we've got propulsion buy, propulsion gap buy. Uh, five times two is 10. <laughs> I'm so knackered from yesterday. I did three live rooms yesterday and they all lasted a minimum of two hours. So basically I was streaming for six hours yesterday. I did two spin classes. I'm just, this morning my brain is fried. I've just been spinning this morning as well for an hour and a half, an hour. Uh, so yeah, I'm not with it. Uh, that's a nice looking long opportunity there. Uh, it's just a, a speculative long on oil based on the fact that market sentiment is long. Um, I've no idea where it's going. Um, I will have a crack at the highs at some point, but I'll see where we get to and where I am with all my other trades. But um, I like lo I like oil long at the moment. I'm not going to position trade it because position trading on oil is, uh, I just got into trouble with it last year and it's too violent. So we get OPEC news. That's a point. When is oil released uh, this week? Because we've had a bank holiday. We've got oil today, haven't we? Uh, where are we? Thursday. Yes, we got crude at four o'clock uh, today. So um, oil inventories are out later. If we get positive, i.e. we get negative barrel count, we'll quite well, say we will. Oil doesn't really play by the rules, does it? But um, we should hopefully get a positive move on oil. So uh, I'm going long one on that. Uh, it's just a quarter of a percent risk because uh, it's oil and I don't like it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. It's a one hour reverse alert. We've got an M15 reverse alert retest. So we've had the, it's not a very clean reversal alert, but it has retested. So there's your W. Um, so we'll see if it holds. Uh, there's a bit of accumulation there to get through. Uh, other than that, we've got this propulsion gap, which we might find sellers at ADR. Um, if it breaks or holds there and breaks through that, Obviously, next level's somewhere up around here, uh, which is this propulsion gap here. So we've got we've got quite a tough road ahead. We've got we know we've got a lot of sellers here, which could well possibly want to add to the sell. Um, you know, just because it's going to go or what or the market is speculating uh, oil getting up to over a hundred dollars a barrel uh, this year has does not mean it's now going to go up. Uh, it means at some point this year, we are expecting it over $100 a barrel. Uh, there's nothing to say that it isn't going to drop down to $50 a barrel before it starts to go up to $100 a barrel. Um, we looked at this uh, on Tuesday, didn't we? And the amount of time it's taken to get from the 107 uh, back in June, May, June time, it took seven months to get to low. So... If that is the case, we're looking at getting back up there in about seven months, aren't we? Potentially. So uh, this could be a uh, a two, three, four day move, potentially. It could have mental oil inventories and do a 200% ADR hit today. I have no idea, have I? But uh, I like the level. So we'll have a crack at that. I'll have a crack at that. I'll post that in the group. Um, Shall post it when I can actually see the chart. Might be handy. There we go. Uh, so if you want to position trade oil, um, oops, there's your second low, which is uh, two uh, one and a half ADR away. Obviously, because that's one and a half ADR. I should use my indicators really that tell me how far away stuff is. Um, one and a half ADR away. Uh, is uh, last month's low. So this is the, the last month's low. Uh, so that would be, again, where I would expect there's going to be a lot of limit orders sitting there. A lot of institutions will have orders down there just to basically buy up the lows, which is what they do. So um, if we do drop further from here and you want to position trade this, you've got an opportunity to get maybe two more positions in uh, and then take a bounce from there. Uh, but that looks pretty good. I like the look at that one, oil. Uh, and the indices we didn't look at, uh, DAX obviously yesterday, uh, we know we had a big strong move up because we made all our money this yesterday morning on that. 
FTSE uh, is on a mission this morning. That's interesting. So the FTSE and the DAX quite often are in sync, as you can see, when you look at the charts of the FTSE. Yeah, and then other oh, DAX rather, and then you switch over to the FTSE. It's very similar price action, almost identical, but obviously in different places. So um, the price action is the same. FTSE is pushing hard today. DAX is stuck. That tells me one of two things is going to happen. Either the FTSE is going to retrace back down because the DAX isn't able to push or the DAX is just waiting for a pop. Uh, so uh, longs on the DAX, uh, if it does get that breakout of this level, the trade for me today on the DAX, I think is, hmm, you're just about to get reversal out on it. But um, really breaking these highs is where I think we're going to find liquidity and go. Um, either that or the FTSE is, um, it's massively strong, isn't it? Look. You tend to find these two go, go together. Uh, so the fact that this is gone, we've got divergence. We've got FTSE divergence with the DAX, which means one of them is wrong. Um, whether or not the trade is to fade the FTSE or to long the DAX, don't know. Certainly extended on the uh, FTSE, aren't we? So there is a, there is a, a divergence there on those, an opportunity take one or the other. Um, I mean, you can see the, when we broke that high, we were not interested in going lower. So uh, we are just approaching a double top, however. So there's an opportunity to sell the double top there. If the DAX is right. When, when you get divergence like this, and this is this works exactly the same in the um, US indices as well with the Dow, the NASDAQ and the S&P. If you see the NASDAQ absolutely flying, uh, and you don't see the Dow and the S&P flying, one of two things is going to happen. The Dow and the S&P are going to turn around and go, oops, we're behind and they're going to fly. Or the NASDAQ isn't able to sustain that move to the upside because the other indices are holding it back and the NAS will fade. So you, when you see divergence like that, you know there's an opportunity. You just don't know which way. Um, and it's the same with this. So Trevor's just said there's news on the, let's see. What was the FTSE news? Can't see any FTSE data. Amazon will lay off 17,000 employees. Um, oh, that's probably not the best one to be in, is it? Uh, hmm. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, give me a list. <laughs> can't remember if Amazon is, uh, yeah, they are NASDAQ. Okay. Uh, that's obviously bad news. Um, well, potentially, don't know, but I mean, it's certainly down at the moment. Uh, so there's a possibility that was 620 last night, wasn't it? I, I I mean, when you get a big, big news like that, um, you have to look at 
uh, the the index that that stock is in. Um, I just wanted to confirm that Amazon was Nasdaq, and it is. Uh, so uh, I would suspect the Nasdaq might open short today. Um, well, yeah, you say that, Ladder. Nasdaq uh, layoffs are normally good for the stock price. Um, it it can work in in both ways. Either way, we should get some volatility potentially this afternoon on the NAS. Um, Layoffs can work in two ways because obviously you have layoffs um, mean that they are uh, streamlining streamlining operations, which increases profitability, which is good for stock price. Or layoffs are a sign of decreasing sales or decreasing productivity, uh, which means that earnings, uh, quarterly earnings are forecasted to drop. It can work both ways. We don't really care because if we're going to play the opening range and they are going to go mental on the Nasdaq today because they want to adjust their positioning on Amazon, it doesn't matter which way it goes, does it? We don't care. We are taking the breaking line of sentiment. So um, what you might find is we get a very large five minute opening range today um, because uh, but the thing is that news came out and that's why I was questioning the timing of that. Uh, the news came out at 6.20 Eastern time. The stock market was open then. So surely we would have seen the repercussions of that. So that would have been 6.20 Eastern. God, I'm useless today. Uh, 6.20. Is that morning or afternoon? 16, yeah, 18.20, yeah. 18.20. ET in UK. That was 11. Ah, okay. So that was 11.20 last night. Hmm. I think it might have a volatile open, which would be nice. Um, anyway, I was looking at something else. <laughs> I got distracted. Indices we were looking at. Uh, yeah, so uh, obviously we've got a divergence opportunity on the... Uh, on the uh, European indices. Uh, yesterday, we had a, uh, a sort of spinning top uh, put in across the board on the US. It was a little bit more bullish than bearish yesterday, but we are still in that range. Uh, so we've we've got nowhere to go at the moment. We're sitting down at the lows on the NAS. Um, and we're, you know, we're just kind of sitting in that pre-Christmas uh, doldrums at the moment. I was hoping FOMC was going to move it yesterday, but we didn't get it. Uh, now we're just sitting sideways again. So rotation days are quite possible at the moment until we get a breakout. Uh, and uh, yeah, NASDAQ and everything is just kind of sideways at the minute. So we're playing today off of an inside bar. Uh, so at the moment we are an inside bar on an inside bar. Uh, which is basically a symmetrical triangle contraction, which means, bang, we're going to get some movement at some point shortly. Um, the market will only contract for a certain amount of time. If you look at this on a lower time frame, uh, before we uh, get an explosive move. Yeah. So uh, at the moment, we are basically sitting in. Uh, a contraction. So you can see from the daily candles, we got uh, a uh, outside bar. So there's that candle there. Then we've got an outside bar put in. Then we've got an inside bar. And now we're sitting as an inside bar on an inside bar, which is a contraction. Contractions and uh, accumulations happen before explosive moves. So uh, we will potentially get one today. Looking good. Again, same thing on the NAS. Doesn't really matter where you put it. You don't have to be accurate with symmetrical triangles. Um, as long as you can see that there is the, the one, two, three, four, five. When you get down to six, You've got nowhere to go. It's got to go somewhere. Can't go sideways forever. Uh, can you share your reversal EA set file? Um, I don't have one. Uh, there's set files on the blog. 
Um, so if you go to the product page on the uh, on MQL5 or on the website, um, there is a link. Are you talking about the, yeah, reversal, yeah, yeah. Uh, so start to set files and test results. So uh, there's a post here um, which has got loads of strategies to trade with the market reverse alerts EA, which is my main bread and butter, H4, M15, M1, uh, H1, M5, mean reversion. Uh, there's a hedging strategy, which will work well in range bound markets. Uh, we've got yesterday's high low reversals, uh, which are stop hunt plays. Um, all these set files are there. So that's the name of the set file. And then there's a zip file down here, which has got the set files in. But for me, the way that I use the market reverse alerts EA for position trading is I will just basically, I don't leave it running constantly. Um, this, this account here, this IC Markets account has been running the H1M5 set file for a year and a, about, uh, I don't know, a year and three months or something. It's 130% uh, up or something. Um, this has been running H1M5. So this has been running uh, this set file. There's the ADR set file. There's H1M5. Hedging. Yesterday's high low. Mean reversion, GUM15. Trend pullback, GUM15. Right. Okay. So sorry. It, it's this. It's this set file. Yeah. But all you do is you change. Um, you put it on M five and you use H one instead of H four. So it does the same thing. All it's doing is it's waiting for RSI to be extended on the hourly chart, and then it uses M five to get in a reversal alert. So you put it on the M five time frame. Uh, but the, all I do with it is I just put the EA on. Uh, and I have set files which I use, which um, the main one is basically support resistance bounce. And all this does is it gets me in on the next reversal. So. Um. <clears throat> uh, during late today, uh, what has happened on today's NAS trades? Nothing. Stopped out. Yeah. Just uh, a mess today. Yeah, I mean, as you, I mean, there's there's nothing you can do with that. I mean, it's just we're what uh, we're an hour and a half into the session yet, uh, and we are at the open. We haven't gone anywhere. It's just not. There's just no way of making money today. Uh, Sompalu, too buggy for MT five. Uh, spent more time closing pending orders. Uh, some blue, you, you have to, uh, if you're talking about the ORB EA, uh, and uh, I'm assuming you're using version two, not version one, uh, send me a DM in Telegram with what you're doing and what, and you'll set file and I'll, I'll test it. See if I can replicate it. But um, if you're using version one, scrap it. The, the, I, I don't know. I haven't got version one anymore. I can test version one if you, if you want to keep using version one, obviously. But there's no difference in logic in version one, version two, with actual entries, pendings, and stuff like that. There's different logic with closing pendings. Um, but yeah, you will have to close your own pending orders. It closes at end of day. It's not. It's not. Uh, if you're saying it's not you're spending time closing pending orders, that's because it's not meant to close pending orders. It will close pending orders at the end of session. Uh, it, it's designed to leave them open because obviously if we get a fail breakout in one direction, we want to go the other way. That's part of the strategy. Uh, ain't a low float, a, it's a scam retail. Ain't a low float, it's a scam retail. Advocate for zero interest rates, plebs hit them on all sides. Okay, you're a bit of a knob, aren't you? <laughs> Weirdo. Uh, can you publish the set files you have uh, the ones that i can just place to get me in the next reversal alert when i've decided to trade that vehicle uh yeah 
yeah. Okay. I'll put, I'll pop. I'll I'll grab those and um. Uh, I'll pop those in the Telegram group. Uh, those ones. I'll grab those and put them in the Telegram group. Um, I'll do a quick explanation of what they do as well. Uh, do you think it's possible to add the scorecard data from your website to show it in MetaTrader for the selected instrument as part of the market reversal indicator? No. Too complicated. <laughs> it's possible. Everything's possible, but I, I can't be bothered. There's a company that actually does that. If you want, there's there's another company that um, I looked at that does the does a similar thing with scorecarding, and I think they've got a indicator uh, that link that does exactly that. You'd have to pay a thousand dollars for it. But, um, it's more than that actually. I think. I don't know. Uh, but I I could. But I to be honest. The time I'd have to take to do all of that, and the fact that I can literally just go like that, uh, Aussie New Zealand, and flick back here and go Aussie New Zealand. How long did that take me? I really don't need to automate that process of, of flicking over here and going Euro Swiss. Yeah. Or rather going to Euro Swiss and going, what should I do with Euro Swiss? Buy it. I don't need that data on my chart and I haven't got anywhere to put it. <laughs> no, I can't be bothered. Sorry. If you want to do an indicator to do that or go and get one built yourself, that's no problem. I give you full permission to go and scrape my website and scrape all this data off. If you want to build something to do it, do it. Uh, I don't mind or if anybody else does. It's, it's out there. I'm not, I don't charge for it. So it's just data on the web. Uh, go and grab it. As long as you can give me a copy for free. Morning, Neo. You're really late, Neo. I'm about to go. Uh, the ORB was adding pending orders uh, while being on the trade already without having permission to add and different expert IDs. Uh, it, it, well, it's meant to add pending orders, yeah. I'm not sure, Sampalu, I'm not sure you understand what this, this is doing, um, but send me a DM. Have you watched the video, first of all? Were you in the live room when I made this video yesterday? I know it's two hours long, but it explains everything. So I've watched this. Um, it's meant to add pending orders um, while it's being on a trade. It's its job. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I can't. You, you see me using the thing every day. It's, it doesn't. It doesn't do what you're saying. So there's something else wrong there. Either there's a magic number conflict, or but not two or at each end. Yeah, no, it should add two at each end. Some blue, depending on your settings. Yeah, have you got this setting set to true? Take multiple trades at the same level. If so, yes, it should add multiple trades at the same level. If you turn that to false, it won't add multiple trades at the same level. Yeah, sorry, you can't see that, can you? It's on the, off the bottom of the screen, that one. It should do that. That's exactly what it's designed to do. Uh, if you've got three, three uh, opening range lows at the same level, it will add three pending orders there if you ask it to again settings will tell you that. but if you're finding it's not doing that then yes let, send me your set file and i will test it um if it's set on false yeah let's send me a set file then i'll test it um and i assume you're in mt5 the buggy the buggy system and again just stop buying mt5 it's crap uh but i've tested tested it Take multiple trades at the same level, false. Uh, entering all.
This is where I find out there's a bug in the EA. One position at one entry. Okay. Uh, it's only taking one. It's only doing one. Yeah, I've got two buy stops. One at opening range high, one and two. Correct. Yeah, opening range low. We've got opening range low one and two and three all at the same level, and it's just taken one cell, one order. It doesn't add multiples. It's not doing it. This is what I mean. It's it's not. I, if I can't replicate the problem, the only thing I can assume is that you've got a problem either with your terminal, your your EAs, uh, magic numbers, or something. I don't know. I can't replicate the problem. It doesn't happen. Uh, so. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no one else has mentioned it. You're the only person that's mentioned it. There's 30 people have got the EA. I use it on a daily basis on multiple accounts, on multiple terminals and on MT5. And I can't make it do what you want, what, you, what yours is doing. And every time in my experience with the market reversal of that CA, when someone's got a problem, it's 100% of the time, it's their magic number that causes the problem. So... I had version two showing many entries. Uh, I'll look at it again today. Is that on MT4 or MT5, John? MT4. I don't know. I'm running. I'm running the thing. You've seen me. I've been. I've been running the thing live for days. It's not doing it. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, I can't replicate the problem. I'm running it on two different brokers with different digits and everything. It's just I can't make it do it. I, will, I, will, uh, I don't know really how I have to test it. If it doesn't do it, it doesn't do it. can't think what it could be if it is happening but um i need more data if, if you're finding that it's doing something i need more data the problem with uh, the problem is obviously all, all my testing is done in the strategy tester and then i move from the strategy tester into a live environment which is what i'm doing here i'm testing this in live environment um the only difference between version two and version 2.2 is I've added two extra uh, inputs, but they have nothing to do with taking trades or, or, or anything to do with the trade. So the trade logic hasn't changed at all. Um, so I will put version 2.2 onto the VPS today uh, and let that go and do some uh, testing. Uh, and I will test it on, um, on M5 and just get it to take trades uh, and see if I can replicate an issue. But uh, I need to see set files basically, because if, if there is a, com uh, don't forget the problem with EA development uh, is you can see how many, and this is why I try and keep things simple. Again, you can see how many inputs are in here. I can't test and I haven't tested every combination of inputs. You're talking millions. I can't test them. It's impossible for me to test every input combination. So there may be an input combination you're using that I've never, ever seen or used, which is causing an issue. If that's the case, that's fine. Just give me the set file. And if I can replicate it, I can see what logic is running under the hood. And then I can uh, uh, obviously figure out if there's a bug where it is. But um, I, yeah, I mean, I haven't, uh, I haven't experienced any issues. So. Did the EA get chopped today? Yeah, badly, yeah. Everybody got chopped today. The only people that won today are the people that shorted the double top and long the double bottom. Again, it's the same old thing, isn't it? There's, there's three strategies. There's only three strategies in the world, and there's different variations of them, but there's three strategies. 
there's mean reversion, there's breakout, and there's trend. Yeah, mean reversion traders today were absolutely lapping it up. Breakout traders today were destroyed. Trend traders today were destroyed. So these guys got killed, these guys got killed, these guys made a million. Tomorrow, these guys will get killed and we'll make a million. The only way you're going to win every day is if you use all three of those, well, rather two of them, those two really, because that turns into a trend. So the only way you're going to win is if you put both of those on a chart and trade both of them at the same time. Um, but what will happen is that will lose a load of money, that will make a load of money, and what you'll get is break even. There's no point in that, is there? So just trade one, and you're going to have winning days, you're going to have losing days. You'll have three or four losing days on the trot. Look at the back testing. If you want to back test, you know, there will be losing days on the trot. It will draw down six, eight, ten thousand pounds on a hundred K account. It will lose 10%. Because it will, because the market is going to do this sometimes and uh, you're going to lose. But that's trading. There is no strategy that has a hundred percent strike rate. There is no strategy that has a hundred percent winning days. There's no trader in the world that's had a hundred percent winning weeks or months. Everybody loses and this is a losing day. You just suck it up. But you limit your losing days and you make sure your losing days are smaller than your winning days. So when we win, we win 2K plus. When we lose, we maximum loss is 1250. So on the days we make three to 4K, because when we get to 2K, we tighten our stops and it keeps going parabolic and we stop out at 3,500. They way outweigh these long-term edge. But your long-term edge is going to look like that. Not going to look like that. Yeah, so it's good. You know, you need, you need to see this. And I showed this yesterday in the live room, uh, in the live room about the strategy. I showed a day virtually the same as this. The day was the day was worse than this, actually. The day that I showed yesterday in the live room video was that. The candle bodies were like that. The wicks on the candles were tiny. And it literally was up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down. And then it broke. Too late. We're dead. Nothing you can do. <laughs> uh, sent me the set file. Uh, even on the strategy tester, it does. Uh, even on strategy tester, he does something else. Okay, I'll have, I'll have a look at it. Uh, all your indicators based on SMC concepts? No. No. I don't know. I, yeah, I'm, I don't know. You tell me. You've put an S on the end of concept. There's lots of them. Uh, possibly, yeah. Market reversal alert indicator is uh, is a market structure. That's why I call I'm, my website is the market structure trader. This indicator uh, signals market structure breaks. Uh, if smart money concepts you class as being market structure, then yes, these are smart money concept indicators, I guess. Um, but uh, I don't really class myself as a smart money concept trader. I don't believe in there is such a thing as a smart money concept. Market moves up and down. Uh, if you take trades at logical areas of support and resistance, you're a logical good trader. It's not smart. It's just what... I, don't know. I think all these names you get given stuff, like everybody, you know... Where do you want to be buying and where do you want to be selling? Yeah. Is that smart? Yeah. Is that smart? Yeah. Is that smart? Yeah. Is it intelligent? Yeah. Is it intelligent? Yeah. Is it intelligent? Yeah. Are you a clever trader? Yeah. Are you a clever trader? Yeah. Call it what you like. It's just support and resistance. <laughs> uh, but my indicator at these levels will just tell you when it's uh, well, the, the market reversal alerts indicator will just tell you when it um, when it changes direction. That's all. It's all it's doing. It's not doing anything more complex than saying uh, we're changing direction. Yeah, we've gone up uh, and now we are going down. 
and it draws a little box and it keeps trailing that box down as we move. And then when we break above it, it goes orange and signals you going the other way. So if you take that at this level, when they've hit yesterday's low and the limit orders have triggered, that is a smart money concept, isn't it? I guess. I don't, I don't believe in really putting names on stuff. It doesn't. The, tr the trouble is, uh, there's a lot of people calling themselves smart money concept traders, and they're all doing something different. Um, the smart money is the institutions. It's these guys. The dumb money is those guys. And really, when these guys uh, are going one way and these guys are going the other way, that's when you want to start looking for trades that agree with where the fundamentals are going and just get in. Uh, you're never going to get your timing right. That's the thing. So if you're going to use a stop loss, you need to use, I guess, smart money concepts and get in at logical areas. If you're not using a stop loss, just get in, wait, which is what position trading is. So uh, but there's lots of ways of using the indicators. You know, RSI is not a smart money concept indicator. Uh, ADR is not a smart money concept indicator, as far as I know. I don't know. Um, and those are my main, I, the, the, that, that, and that is all I use. And this obviously just tells me where um, the moves started. So this is kind of supply and demand, if you like, I suppose. It's, it's a different version of supply and demand. But again, it's all the same stuff. People call everything something different, don't they, Christian? It's just, you know, it's um, it's it's a trend. It's like everything in the world. You have these trends, these things that become popular. And, you know, in the retail crowd, the, the guys that are selling all the uh, signals and the courses and stuff need to come up with new stuff all the time. Um, and uh, I think that's what they do, basically, is just rename something. So, you know, supply and demand. Uh, is what we used to call support and resistance 15 years ago. They now call it supply and demand. But you look at any supply and demand indicator, all it's doing is drawing lines or drawing blocks. So we've changed the lines, support and resistance lines, as I use, we've changed them into blocks. And it's now called supply and demand. 10 years ago, that was support and resistance. Uh, uh, a double top is now called a liquidity run. It's all the same stuff. It's been going on for decades. Yeah, this double bottom here. Twenty years ago, before the whoever came up with the word liquidity run or whatever, um, that was still happening twenty years ago. Go back and look on a chart twenty years ago on the hourly or four hourly time frame. It was happening back then. There was no such thing as a liquidity run. People didn't even know what liquidity was. It's just a reinvention of, of something that's been around for ages, which is basically price. It's a market. Somebody wants to buy something. Somebody else wants to sell it. So when you have two people agreeing on a transaction, you get a movement, a tick. And if there's more people wanting to buy something than sell something, you'll continuously tick in one direction until there is nobody left up here to sell. And the buyers cannot buy any more of the product. Therefore, they decide then to sell the product. It's just simple market supply and demand, which is probably why everybody now calls it supply and demand, because that's all it is. It happens in all marketplaces. If you want to go out to a market and buy an apple, you need a supplier of the apple and you are demanding an apple. For the transaction to happen, there has to be two participants. Yeah. When you get up to here, a lot of the big market players will place limit orders at that level because that's what happened before. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because everybody sees the limit orders trigger and decides to join the bus and the bus goes down. And this is what we call, uh, well, call it all sorts of things, but this is what most of the larger market participants call balance. The market is in equilibrium. It's in balance. Everybody's happy to transact at this level. At some point, one of the banks is going to go, actually, I fancy seeing if we can get a dollar. And that is called price discovery. 
and then price will move into a price discovery phase. And from that price, I'm not going to find one here. Uh, and from that price discovery phase, so balance, price discovery, balance, price discovery, balance, price discovery failed, balance. Price discovery will be next, either that way or that way. And it, all it is is the market participants saying, can we get our exchange on the Euro Swiss done at 97? If there's enough people, we're going to balance. If there's not, we'll come back. Uh, but that's what happens. That's what drives the market is human beings and fundamentals. Strategies, you can call what you like, can't you? Um, they're all the same thing. They're buying and selling stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, I guess I'll do. I don't know. Smart money concepts, I think, is originally it was um, Steve Maurer, wasn't it? He came up with, I think that's the thing. And this is why, uh, you know, the RSI, the old shark, shark fin, as he used to call it. Um, all that is, is uh, an RSI extension on the TDI indicator. That's what a shark fin is. So, yeah, I guess I am using smart money concepts if you class the shark fin to be smart money a smart money concept. I don't know. It's got so woolly, isn't it? Smart money concepts, what it is. There's people selling smart money courses, smart money concept courses um, that have got, that are just new and different and not, they think they just, I think everybody just thinks they need something smart. And what, what's the smart money doing? What are the banks doing? Well, the banks buy and sell at supply and demand or support and resistance areas. It's not really smart, is it? It's just what happens. I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm just too old. I get, I get bogged down in the uh, in the intricacies of uh, what everybody calls everything. It's just movement. We don't know when it's going to move. We know it's going up and down. It's going sideways. That's literally all you ever know. So you just got to get in when you think it's right and either use a stop or don't use a stop. Uh, and there's different ways of making money, either using stops or not using stops. If you're going to use a stop, make sure you don't have a TP on it because you need to make sure you get a big runner. Is uh, uh, a two to one risk reward sounds fantastic on paper, but try getting a 50% strike rate with it consistently. It's just not going to happen. You're, you're requiring the market to move two times your stop. It's nothing to do with your stop. The market couldn't give a monkeys about your stop. And it's definitely not going to go two to one risk reward if it doesn't want to. So you get out when the market lets you get out. This is a really good example of that yesterday. New Zealand dollar CAD. Yeah. I took that long there on a reversal alert. Uh, it moved all the way up to there. Where? Resistance. It did a smart money concept thing, I guess. Uh, and, uh, and then it came all the way down. And I moved my stop up into there to make sure that I made some profit. My TP on this Uh, was up here somewhere. There it was there. That high. Um, my stop was down here somewhere. Um, so I was trying to target that. Uh, I would have got probably a two to one there. But if I choose a three to one risk reward, I lose. Yeah, And that's the difference. You, you, you can't know where the market is going. I still think this is going up here at some point, but my timing on the entry was wrong. So I'm going to try and get in again because my timing was wrong, but I still, I'm not going to go. That's my stop. My TP is going here because if I get stopped out three times and then I get to where I want to go, I've lost money. Yeah. And if you look at any broker um, sheet, any, any uh, uh, there's an MT4 you can get, which, um, which brokers use, an MT4 version, which brokers use, which allows them to see all market uh, or every order, basically, that's on their books for, from every retail trader. If you look at the statistics, which have been published by people out there, um, of how many traders um, win, 
and how many lose, you will find that the vast majority of traders have a positive strike rate. So they win more than 50% of their trades. They're right more than 50% of the time, but 80% of them lose money. So being right is not important. I was right on that New Zealand dollar CAD. Was it a good trade? No, but I was right. Yeah. Um, the traders that win and make money are the ones that do not try and force a reward out of the market. They let the market give them the reward. That was all the market wanted to give me on that trade. Um, if it had pulled back and done that, it would have given me a lot more. But I'm not in control of the market. So you basically just have to get in and hope that it gets higher than normal. And usually that's caused by news. 200 ADR moves and things are quite often caused by news, aren't they? So you get into the market in the direction you think it's going to go and you hope that you get a big spike. Those are the ones you win on. Opening range breakouts. Prime example. Yeah, look at yesterday's opening range breakout. Bang, bang, bang. Done. Thank you very much. 1800 in, in I don't know, what was that? 30 minutes? Um, look at what I could have won. But the market, the, I hit my target. That was a TP. The market would have given me 10 to 1 risk reward. That is a 10 to 1, right, up there. 195, 2000. That's a 10 to 1 risk reward I could have had yesterday if I didn't take that profit. Yeah. So, and a lot of people would have made that yesterday that didn't take the profit. But it's not in my control. What could have happened yesterday is that. Uh, and if I hadn't have got out of this trade yesterday on my max win, my stop loss, as you can see on these positions, was there. And my stop loss would never have been triggered. It would have pushed up. My stop would have then moved up to about there. It would have pushed up. My stop would have moved up to there. It would have pushed up. Then it would have taken me out. So I would have got out there instead of getting out there, which is roughly 60% more than I made. So I would have made somewhere in the region of 3,000 something yesterday if I hadn't have taken it off there. But I have no clue from here. I have no clue where it's going. So you get in and you just get out when you think you need to get out. And that is based on you as an individual or and your account and what it's doing today. Uh, not based on a two to one risk reward because a 50% strike rate with a two to one risk reward doesn't take into account the fact that you double your lot size because you have three losers in a row and then you lose twice more. All of a sudden you're massively negative on your account and your strategy might have a long-term edge at two to one, but you blew it. And this is why EAs are helpful in executing positions because it just does what it's told. And I know that this has a long-term edge and I know I'm going to get days like this and I accept it because I've seen it in backtesting all the time. Um, but there's nothing you can do about where it's going and when it's going. And that's why I say, you know, every time you get into a trade, it's going to go up or it's going to go down and it's going to move through time. Those are the only three constants we know as traders. And not just us, the banks. Everybody knows the same thing. That That's all that happens. We just need to get in and hope that when we get in, they decide to, to use that 50-50 advantage uh, to make the move higher. Uh, where it's going, I don't know. But we know that support and resistance and supply and demand is a thing. Because we see it. We've seen it in the past. And it happens over and over again. And it's been happening for decades. And that's all you can do. Get in and hope. Yesterday, I hoped it would go higher and it didn't. So I got out. I've got in again and I'm hoping it's going to go higher today or over the next two to three days. But I will manage the position as I see it unfold. But I'm certainly not going to put my TP uh, somewhere like that. Because uh, if it's going to go and up to here, why not take that uh, and, and trail the position? And if it comes and stops me out, stops me out. Doesn't matter, does it? Uh, anyway, that was a waffle. <laughs> it's important waffle though, because it's it's what happens. It's that's the way it works. You know, we you need to understand the mechanics behind what's going on under the hood here, because th this is what makes us the money. Understanding the mechanics, you know, and this is why position trading works so well, 
uh, most of the time because we understand where price is likely to go at some point. We just have no clue when it's going to do it. So the timing element is the one thing that everybody struggles with. And the reason everybody gets out at a one to one or a two to one is because they've lost three times. They need their money back. And trying to get a zero sum result every time is pointless. If you lose $500 three times, you've lost $1,500. Almost every retail trader out there, me included a lot of the time, as soon as I get a positive trade that gets to $1,500, what do you do? You close it because all you want is your money back. What happens after you close that? It goes up there and you would have made three grand. But your, you as a trader can't let that thing run because you've seen it three times go wrong. Your assumption is because we now in profit up here, at some point soon it's going to go wrong. Look at yesterday's moves, 200% ADRs. We get out at 100% ADR because most of the time it pulls back. Yeah, 68% of the time when you get to ADR, it stops and pulls back. We know that happens. Uh, it's a, statist a statistical fact. Uh, but other times it goes to 200. So the best thing to do when you get to 200 ADR or 100 ADR is not to get out your position, is to put a stop somewhere and hope but today is one of the days you get to 175 ADR. And these are the ones that are going to make you the money long term. This is where the edge is. And that's the edge with the opening range breakout strategy. Yeah, We don't know when we're going to get these. Um, we just need to get in. We're going to get these. But we're also going to get these. Uh, as long as there's more of those than there is those, i.e. there's more bull days or bear days than there are rotation days, which there are, that's your edge. You just make your edge, basically, but don't limit your upside. Let your upside be what your upside is and trail. However you trail, trail with a parabolic SAR, a moving average, a trailing stop, do it yourself manually. Doesn't matter, but let the market give you that when it, when it, gets, when it gets there. The reason I took that off is because I'm running a prop account here and obviously I need to, I'm, I'm trying to get target. <laughs> So I'm, uh, I'm eking my profit out gradually on it. But. Uh, anyway, I'll leave, let you all go. Um, I'm back at 2.20 for the New York session. And we'll, uh, we'll have a look at uh, NAS this afternoon. We should hopefully get some volatility on the NAS because obviously it's, uh, we've got some news of Amazon, uh, which could either pump or dump. We don't know. Uh, we've got PPI figures out for Euro as well. Uh, we've had some Bank of England news as well. Uh, PMI is slightly down. Uh, inflation to be 7.4% one year ahead of December, up from 7.2 in the November survey. So we are forecasting inflation increase in uh, the pound, which is negative pound. Um, business expected unit costs to grow by 8.1% over the coming year. Again, negative economy. Uh, so this is all negative pound. Uh, higher interest rates are projected to reduce investment uh, and unemployment over the next year. Yeah, well, we know that. So uh, this is all pointing towards higher interest rates. So um, from a uh, from the pounds perspective, what that is going to mean long term is. Interest rates are going to continue to rise at a uh, at the same rate I would expect or higher moving forward. So if the pound at the moment, which is sitting at 3.5, overtakes the US and New Zealand, for example, um, we will see uh, the pound strengthen. So uh, that is, although it's all bearish economy, it's bullish interest rate, which is what's driving most things at the moment. Uh, so if these start to go down, inflation rate goes to a zero or a negative, uh, and this goes remains being a positive, um, we will start to see pound US dollar rising. But we haven't got to worry about that yet because uh, the interest rate decision is miles away yet. Uh, next interest rate is, I don't know when the next interest rate is, it's miles off, I think, at the moment.
uh, February is our, our next rate on the pound. So we got the whole month of January basically, but we're forecasting an increase. So long time to go. Uh, morning, Snavco. I'm just about to go. Bye. <laughs> morning, Belajar from Indonesia. Uh, I'm off. So uh, I'll be back at 2.20 uh, for the New York session. Uh, we'll see how we get on with that as this afternoon. Uh, if you need anything, I'll be in the Telegram group. I'll have a look through all your messages. I've got loads of DMs to go through. So uh, I will have a look through all those and try to at day today. Um, some people want set files for the new EA, which I need to do as well. So I've got loads of stuff to do. So if I don't get around to you, don't test me because I will get to you, but I'm just, I've got a backlog. So I need to crack on. I will, uh, I'll be back tomorrow, this afternoon, 2.20. Uh, anything you need, let me know. Otherwise I will see you then. Hopefully it's a good afternoon. Mm -hmm.